Hello and welcome to another tutorial on my channel. I'm Andrea and today we are making the Limonite shawl. This is a triangle shawl with a slightly rounded upper edge. It's not exactly the same as my previous patterns because this one grows a bit slower. But still you have this beautiful edge that sits on your shoulders comfortably. I will walk you through the first few rows and then the edging with the popcorns. You can wear this as any triangle scarf or like a shawl. You can tie it at your back. You can make this shawl with DK weight yarn, so it's a very fast project. You will need a Tunisian crochet hook with a cable, so make sure you have that before we get started. For this pattern, you will need some yarn. I recommend DK weight yarn or weight 3 or between 3 and 4. I used about 300 grams of this yarn, which amounts to about 700 meters. You also need a 7 or 8 millimeter hook with a cable, a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors, and optionally you can use two stitch markers. For the current tutorial I'm going to be using this yarn. It's called Creative Fluffily <laughs> Decay from Rico Design. It has 420 meters per 150 grams. If you were to use this yarn to make the whole shawl, you would need between one and a half and two of these balls. The recommended hook on the label is four millimeters. It's the same as this yarn, but we'll be using the eight millimeter hook to make the stitches nice and wide so that you don't have any trouble working with them. We begin with a slip knot, leaving a tail. And we put this slip knot on the hook. Then we chain five without pulling on the tail. And now we pick up five Tunisian simple stitches in the back bumps of these chains. Now you should have six loops on the hook. In the pattern you will notice that there are some numbers in the round brackets. These will tell you exactly how many loops you will have on the hook before doing the return pass. So now on the first row we have six loops. To do the return pass we chain one and then yarn over pull through two until we have only one loop left on the hook. Now we begin row 2 and we have one increase. We make one full stitch here in between the first two stitches. Then we have one Tunisian simple stitch in the next stitch. Then we have one full stitch, two Tunisian simple stitches, the next two stitches are worked normally. Then we have one more full stitch in the next space between stitches. Then one more Tunisian simple stitch, one full stitch, and the last stitch. Now we have 10 stitches on the hook. Chain 1, and yarn over pull through 2 to return. On row 3 we are starting to set up the beautiful honeycomb stitch. We begin with a full stitch in the first space here. Then we have a purl stitch which we make by bringing the yarn to the front, putting the hook through the stitch and then yarning over and pulling through one. Then we have a Tunisian simple stitch. Then one more purl stitch, bring the yarn to the front, put the hook through, yarn over, pull through one. Now we have a full stitch in the next space. Then we have the two stitches that will be the spine of the shawl. Two Tunisian simple stitches. Then we have one more full stitch in the next space. One purl stitch, one Tunisian simple stitch, one purl stitch. Then one more full stitch to increase at the end of the row. 
and the last stitch which is behind these two vertical bars. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two to the beginning of the row. Now we have the main setup of the shawl. You will continue working purl stitches in the Tunisian simple stitches or in the full stitches at the beginning here and Tunisian simple stitches in what were purl stitches on the previous row. We put a full stitch in the first stitch. Then we have a purl stitch. Then we see that here it was a purl stitch on the previous row. We have a Tunisian simple stitch. Then another purl stitch. Tunisian simple stitch. Purl stitch. And we have reached the middle. We have the two Tunisian simple stitches. We make a full stitch before them. Then we have two Tunisian simple stitches. One full stitch. Purl. Simple stitch. Purl simple stitch, purl, and the last increase we make a full stitch, and the last stitch. We chain one, yarn over, pull through two to the beginning of the row. This is all you have to do and as the rows grow you will start seeing the honeycomb pattern forming in the two panels of the shawl. I will show you one more row just to demonstrate the pattern and then I will show you how to bind off. On every row we have the same elements. We have the full stitch in the first space here. Then we have row, simple stitch, all the way to the middle, finishing with a purl. You know to stop when you, you notice these holes. And we have a full stitch, two Tunisian simple stitches, and a full stitch. Then we continue with purl, simple stitch, purl, simple stitch, purl, simple stitch and purl. At the end of the row we have the last increase, one full stitch and then the last stitch. Then chain one, yarn over, pull through two to return. Once you're happy with how big your shawl is, or when you only have about 5 to 10 percent of your yarn left, we can bind off. You can make a simple edge or you can add standing popcorns. It's your choice, depending on what you like, you can add tassels to a simple edge if you want to. The most important thing is that you bind off the last row so that you have a nice edge here and it's not loopy like this. To bind off, all you have to do is slip stitch into each of these stitches. To make the standing popcorns, we chain three. Then we put five double crochet stitches in the first stitch. For the popcorns, you could use a smaller hook if you want to have a tighter popcorn. Then you put the hook through the top of this chain three and pull the loop through. And now you can slip stitch around the bottom of this popcorn to close it up. And this is a standing popcorn. Next, you slip stitch into the next stitch eight times. If you want to, you can make these more often or less often. It's your choice how often you want to have the popcorns. Then you would make another standing popcorn, but I am two stitches away from the middle, so I will add two more slip stitches. 
you will do this when you reach the middle. You, you might have to add or subtract a few stitches to get to the middle. Now make another standing popcorn, chain 3, and since this is the middle of the shawl, we will work in the space between these two stitches, putting the popcorn there, 5 double crochet stitches. And pull the loop through the top of the chain 3. Then slip stitch around the bottom of the popcorn and continue with the same number of slip stitches as on the previous row before the next popcorn. I have 10. I will also slip stitch into the last stitch here before I do the, the standing popcorn. Chain 3, put 5 double crochet stitches in the last stitch. Then go through the top of the chain 3, pick up the loop, pull through, and slip stitch around the base of the popcorn. Now you would cut off the yarn, pull this through the end, and then you have your finished shawl. As you can see, even though we are using a very big hook for this yarn, it's not a problem because now the stitches are standing out nicely and if I made another row you would see the honeycomb stitches coming out. You can get the full instructions to make the full size shawl on my website and on Etsy and then you can follow along with the numbers of repeats for each row. If you have any questions about this pattern, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. First, please check out the pattern, and then if you have any more questions after that, I will be happy to answer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to know when I publish more videos, please subscribe. If you want to try something else, there are several videos on my channel with different shawls, so you can try them out. I've also just begun a series of guided meditations in crochet. If you want to get into the flow with me while crocheting, please check that out, I have a separate playlist for it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!